Hello everyone, my name is Anil Prasad, Assistant Professor, Department of AC. Welcome to the course Electronic Circuits and Analysis 1. This is the second lecture in this course. In the first lecture, we discussed about course objectives, where we have understood what are all the various types of circuits that we are going to learn in this particular course. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the course outcomes. So, let us begin. Course Outcomes A detailed description of what a student must be able to do at the end of a course is what is termed as course outcome. Okay, so we have seen earlier a program outcome. What are the skills that can be demonstrated by the student upon the completion of the program? Right? In a similar way, course outcome means what are the skill set that can be developed by the student okay, upon the completion of the course based on what they are taught in the course right so this is what is course outcome there are uh, five course outcomes in this course and before we look into the details of those course outcomes i would uh, like to introduce two important terms one is design and the another is analysis okay design so either design or analysis we are going to talk in terms of circuit okay so what do i mean by designing a circuit or what do i mean by analyzing a circuit okay consider a circuit let us say it is having an input x of t and output y of t so designing of a circuit means finding the component values that are present in the circuit given the input and the output okay so i can understand in terms of circuit point of view designing a circuit means designing all the component values that are present in the circuit such that it gives the desired output for the given input x of t right okay analysis means you are asked to find the response of the circuit so now the circuit details are given to you all the component values that are there in the circuit are given to you along the input that is applied to the circuit now you are asked to find the response of the circuit so finding the response of the circuit when the circuit details along with the input are given is termed as analysis of the circuit right so having learned what is the meaning of design and analysis of any circuit we can go through our course outcomes for a better understanding right okay so the first course outcome is analyze the response of linear wave shaping circuits for the given non sinusoidal input signals such as step input pulse input square wave and ramp okay so understand the course outcome very carefully right so analyze the response that means you are expected to analyze the response of what kind of circuits linear wave shaping circuits right so i'll show you two important linear wave shaping circuits that we are going to consider in this course one is named as rc low pass filter circuit and the another is named as rc high pass filter circuit okay so these are the two linear wave shaping circuits so that we are going to consider which are required to be analyzed okay so we need to find out the response out of these circuits when a particular input is given okay and what kind of input we are likely to apply step input pulse input square wave input and ramp input okay so the outcome is when either of these circuits are given to you when one of the type of input is applied to any of the circuit finding the response of the circuit is what is the expected outcome okay so the first outcome simply that we need to find the response of either of these two kind of circuits but in particular the specified input signals are supposed to be given as input signals right okay so we'll see later on why these circuits are given the name rc low pass filter rc high pass filter that we'll see when we are going into the uh, units in detail right so here our focus is only on the course outcomes right okay so let us see how does the step input is going to look like okay this is how a step input can be represented mathematically 
it is represented as x of t is equal to capital V for t greater than or equal to 0 and is 0 for t less than 0. So that means when t is less than 0, there is no input and t input exists only when t is greater than or equal to 0, right? So if the magnitude is 1, then we call it as a unit step input signal. But here it is simply step input signal, right? Okay. The next type of input signal is a pulse input signal. Okay. This is how a pulse input signal is going to look like. Right. So, how do I describe the pulse input signal? X of t is equal to V for an interval, let us say T1 to T2. So, what may be T1 here? 1 microsecond. T2 is 2 microseconds. Okay. So, T1 is that means the input signal is existing only when the time duration is in between 1 microsecond to 2 microsecond. For all the other time instants, the input signal is 0, right? So this is what is a pulse. Pulse pulse means it is existing only for a certain duration. For all the other duration, it is 0, right? So it is what is called as pulse input signal, right? Okay. The next input signal is a ramp input signal, okay? So the mathematical representation of this input signal is x of t is equal to t for t greater than or equal to 0 and is 0 otherwise. Okay. So you could see here that if I treat that this is x of t and for t is equal to 1 the output is the input is 1 for t is equal to 2 input is 2 and so on. Okay. So this is a mathematical representation of ramp signal. Okay. And the last signal is that we are going to give to the input of either of the linear wave shaping circuits that is RC low pass filter circuit and RC high pass filter circuit is a square waveform. Okay, square waveform can be drawn something like this, so which I was drawing like here. So it is here I don't uh, want to represent mathematically because I want to use the known concepts. What is the known concepts? If I know how to find the response due to a step input, I know what is the response to this particular input signal. If I know what is the response of uh, the circuit due to a pulse input, I can find the output due to this signal over this duration, right? So uh, that is why I would like to make use of the concepts that are already learned. That is how to find the response due to a step input as well as due to a pulse input. That will be enough for me for finding the response due to any of the square wave input, okay? Right. So overall, the course outcome one is expecting that you have to have the ability of analyzing the response. In particular, the kind of circuits are linear wave shaping circuits, RC low pass filter and RC high pass filter. So you should be in a position to analyze either of those two circuits for a given input signal that can be either step input, pulse input, square wave and ramp. Okay. So this is the first course outcome. So the second course outcome is design and analyze diode clippers and clampers. Having understood design and analyze, now it is very easy for understand uh, to understand this uh, second course outcome. So how many circuits that we will be studying? Two circuits. One is diode clippers and there is diode clampers. Okay. So when a circuit is given to you, you know what is the meaning of designing that circuit or analyzing that circuit. Okay. For example. An input signal is given to you as well as an output signal that is expected to you is also given. Okay, so an output signal that we want it from a given input signal. Then if you are asked to find the circuit with the component details, then it is nothing but the design. Okay, so you have to find out the circuit. You have to design the circuit which is going to take the responsibility of producing this kind of output for this kind of input signal. Okay, so thus that, that uh, circuit is nothing but this. Okay, so that circuit is nothing but this. Okay, so you need to find out what is R value, what is the power supply value, VR, okay, what type of diode I need to choose, right, such that uh, the shape of the output is going to be as our desired output, right. Okay, this is the design, okay, design, finding the component values of the circuit when both input and output is given is a design. Analysis means you are given an input and also a circuit is given to you now. Okay. 
so now you have to analyze okay now you have to analyze this given circuit that what it is going to give the output signal for this given input signal okay so finding out the output when a circuit details and an input signal are given is what is analysis okay so analysis is nothing but finding the output signal okay so the output may be it looks something like this when it is passed through this kind of circuit that we will see later on how it is going to be but for the time being we have to focus on what is the meaning of design and analysis of any given circuit okay so we have understood what is the design and analysis and in particular course outcome 2 focuses on that whether we are able to have the skill of designing and analyzing the two important type of circuits so that is diode clippers and clamping circuits okay right the third course outcome is design and analyze various biasing circuits okay design and analyze see the the purpose of introducing to you the design and analyze is that it is coming in almost all the course outcomes okay so having understood this design and analyze uh, it is easy for us to understand any of the course outcomes so design and analyze various biasing circuits okay so i'll show you how does a biasing circuit is going to look like so that you can easily come to know what do i mean by design of that circuit and analyzing of that particular circuit okay right and the purpose of this circuit is it is used to select an operating point of a transistor amplifier in its active region okay so you all know that bjt amplifier bjt transistor is going to act as an amplifier only when it is operated in the active region okay bjt transistor can act as an amplifier only when it is operated in the active region right so one way of fixing the transistor in its operating point which is an active region is what is uh, made with the help of a biasing circuit okay so with the help of biasing circuits we can fix the operating point of the transistor in its active region right so having done that uh, now your transistor is ready to act as an amplifier okay now your transistor is ready to act as an amplifier now you need to analyze your amplifier which is readily available with you okay so how do i analyze the amplifier circuits by using the h parameter model i already told you that the bjt device he can be replaced with its mathematical model okay so that particular model is also called as h parameter model okay so there are two things that are involved in this course outcome one thing is that you need to design and analyze various biasing circuits whose purpose is to fix the operating point such that your transistor acts as an amplifier and the second thing is analyzing the transistor amplifier circuit okay analyzing the transistor amplifier circuit but this time we are likely to analyze using a model which is called as h parameter model okay so now i am going to show you how does a ce amplifier circuit is going to look like how does the biasing circuit is going to look like so that you can easily understand what do i mean by design and analyze the biasing circuit what do i mean by design and analyze the transistor amplifier circuit right okay. so i'll try to draw so that you also can draw along with me so it will be uh, getting a habit for you how to draw the amplifier circuit so i have considered an npn transistor here okay so i was carefully observe how i was drawing so this is what is a biasing circuit okay so what is that i have considered i have considered four resistors along with the transistor okay this is the vbe what i was applying this is the vce and this is the ic right so operating point means vce comma ic right operating point means vce comma ic so fixing the value of vce and the ic that is given to you can be made happen with the help of this circuit okay in fact this circuit is called as voltage divider bias circuit okay in this circuit is called as voltage divider bias circuit right okay so assuming that 
you have designed this circuit designing this circuit means what finding out the value of r1 r2 rc and re okay so given a transistor along with what is vce what is ic and what is vcc then you have to find out what are the values of r1 r2 rc re he is nothing but the design as we have already come to know that design means finding the component values of the circuit right okay so assume that you have designed now the task is that you need to use it as an amplifier as an amplifier means you give the input okay when once you have uh, fixed your operating point in the active region it needs to act as an amplifier now you apply the input signal how do i apply the input signal using a coupling capacitor okay so let this coupling capacitor be c1 which is used for applying the input signal okay so that is in between these two points I will be applying the input signals. Okay, so let the input signal be like this, which is denoted by V I of T. So I was applying the input through a coupling capacitor C1. Okay, and not only that, I will be using one more capacitor, which I'll call it as a bypass capacitor or emitter capacitor. Okay, so this uh, C E is called as emitter capacitor. Sometimes it is called as bypass capacitor. Why it is so? That we will see later on. Right? Okay. And where do I take the output? I'll take the output normally at the collector. Okay, I'll take the output normally at the collector. So let the output be taken through another coupling capacitor. Let it be C2. Okay, so input is given through the coupling capacitor C1. Output need to be taken through the coupling capacitor C2. Right, so I'll take the output in between these two terminals. Okay, I'll take the output from collector with respect to the ground okay so and the output is looking like this right so the output is found to be something like an inverted version of the input signal output is an inverted version of the input signal right okay we'll see later on why the output has got inverted what is exactly the meaning of ca amplifier and so on and so forth but just we are confining to the course outcome what is that we are expected to learn what is that we are expected to do at the end of the course that is what we are focusing more so that when once we come to know what exactly we are supposed to learn then we'll definitely learn in a much better way okay right so this is a ca amplifier that is going to how it is going to look like right right uh, before we come across with the CA amplifier, I told you that there is a biasing circuit. Okay, what exactly a biasing circuit is? If you remove the signal, if you remove the output signal, uh, if you remove the capacitor with which you are giving the input signal, you remove C1, uh, you remove the bypass capacitor, you remove the output coupling capacitor C2, then this is what is a voltage divider biasing circuit. Okay, so this is what first we need to determine or we, this is what we first need to design then you need to apply your input signal through your coupling capacitors uh, uh, input and you need to take the output through your coupling capacitors okay right so assume that you have designed your ce amplifier now you need to analyze the ce amplifier so for analysis what is that you need to do is you have to use the model okay so as i told earlier that bjt as a model which is denoted by like this okay so what is all that you should do is in the analysis of a ce amplifier just replace your bgt with this particular model okay so this model is representing the approximate behavior of the bjt what we have considered in our circuit okay right so this modeling is normally helpful for uh, 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 circuit analysis uh, making it very comfortable okay so right the fourth outcome is analyze the frequency response of multi-stage amplifiers using h parameter model and single stage amplifier using hybrid pi model okay so what is the fourth outcome is that you are expected to analyze analyze what frequency response characteristics of what type of circuits one is multi-stage amplifier circuits and there is single stage amplifier circuits i already told you in the last class when we are discussing about course objectives multi-stage amplifiers are meant for improving the gain of the amplifier with a technique called cascading right so single stage amplifier means only one amplifier will be present right 
So we need to analyze the frequency response of both multi-stage amplifiers as well as single stage amplifiers. But when we consider the multi-stage amplifiers, we need to analyze using H parameter model. And when we consider the single stage amplifier, we need to consider the hybrid pi model. Okay, there is a slight difference between uh, H parameter model and hybrid pi model. But the, using these models, we need to find the uh, frequency response characteristics of multi-stage amplifiers and single stage amplifiers. Okay, so what is that which is unknown to you as is that what is the frequency response characteristics? Okay, so we know what do you uh, what do you mean by analysis, and we know what is roughly a multi-stage amplifier, and we know what is a single stage amplifier, and uh, we know also uh, what is the model, uh, what is the actual meaning of any model is. Okay, so now we have to look into what exactly a frequency response characteristics means. Okay, what we are analyzed to uh, in finding the frequency response characteristics. Okay, uh, take uh, two axes, one is x axis. Okay, x axis be frequency, y axis be the gain in decibels. Okay, so x axis is frequency in a log scale, y axis will be a gain in decibels. Okay. Plotting the graph between frequency versus gain is what is the frequency response characteristics. Okay, so as I told earlier in the last class, the amplifier characteristic is amplifying all the frequency components present in the input signal equally well. Okay, treating all the frequency components in the input signal equally well in providing the gain. Okay, but in practice, it doesn't happen. Okay, in practice, it doesn't happen, and the frequency response characteristics are going to look something like this. Okay, so with increase in frequency, the gain is going to increase, and then it is going to remain constant, and then again it is going to decrease. Okay, so you can observe that with increase in frequency, the gain has slowly increased up to a certain point of frequency, then it starts remaining constant over a certain frequency. Then again, it starts decreasing with increase in the frequency, right? But what is expected actually? Your uh, amplifier should provide the constant gain throughout your entire frequency. Okay, so that means this constant gain, what are the maximum that your amplifier can give that needs to provide to entire frequency range that is from zero to infinity, all the frequencies should be provided with this constant maximum gain, right? But that it is not happening in in general and that is why we are interested in finding the frequency response characteristics of any amplifier right so this maximum gain okay sometimes it is called as a mid frequency range gain it is being denoted with a v max okay voltage gain which is the maximum provided by your amplifier right okay now i'll be choosing a line which is being denoted with a 3 db line okay so that means the difference between these two margins is 3 db okay so as the gain is considered in decibels you assume that a 3 db lower than this maximum gain for example if the maximum gain is 40 db you draw a line at 37 db okay 40 minus 3 that is 37 db right uh, we will discuss later on why this 3 db okay what is the reason in taking 3 db what is the meaning of 3 db and so on so forth okay but for the time being let us take that uh, consider a 3 db line right so now it is 3 db so in uh, voltage uh, scale it is 0 0.707 times v uh, maximum of this okay so 3 db so the gain in decibels which is number 3 or is same as 70% of the maximum value. Okay, so that means we are considering 70% of the maximum value as our consideration. Okay, so this intersection point of your uh, 3db line and your graph is what is being denoted with FL, and uh, the another intersection point in between your graph and this 3db line is what is denoted with FH. Okay, and the range between this FL and FH is what is called as bandwidth. Okay, so range between FL and FH is what is called as bandwidth. Okay, so FH minus FL is what is denoted as bandwidth, right? So bandwidth means range of frequencies over which the gain is remaining constant is what is called bandwidth. 
okay so analysis of frequency response characteristics of either multi stage amplifiers or single stage amplifiers which we are going to do with any of the given models is nothing but determining this fl or determining this fh or determining this bandwidth okay or understanding what is responsible for making a fix at this particular value or what is responsible for making fix at this particular value or trying to understand how to lower this value and how to increase this value is all being considered in this particular course outcome okay so you are expected to understand how to increase the lower frequency or how to decrease the lower frequency and how to increase the upper frequency is what is being uh, understood in the analysis of uh, frequency response characteristics of any of the given amplifier right okay so the last course outcome is design and analyze bjt based bistable a stable and monostable multi vibrators okay so again as the words design and analyze are there i need not explain to you you can easily understand what this course outcome is all about okay how many types of circuits that we are going to learn bistable bistable stable and monostable multi vibrator circuits as i told earlier multi vibrators are the last type of circuits that we are going to learn and what is the purpose of multi vibrator circuits its purpose is to generate the test signals okay what are the test signals sine signal square wave signal triangular signal and so on right so given a multi vibrator circuit that can be any of these three kind of circuits finding the output value right finding the output value when the circuit details and the input are given is what is analysis okay when the input and output are given to you finding the component values of circuit is what is being called as design of the circuit right so you are expected to either design and analyze the any kind of multi vibrator circuit right so this is the course outcome 5 right so so that's all for today okay so hope you have understood what we have discussed today the course outcomes that what we are expected to learn or do at the end of the course okay so we have understood what we expected from each of these course outcomes after the completion of this particular course okay right so see you next time thank you